bienvenue sur le plateau d'Informatique News pour notre rendez-vous le, le Grand Témoin. Euh, et cette semaine, nous avons le plaisir de recevoir euh, César Cernuda, qui est président de NetApp. Euh, César Cernuda, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you for the invite. My great pleasure to be here with all of you. Good. Uh, let, let's start by, by something that, you know, matter for all of us. Uh, I'm talking about the uh, COVID crisis, uh, which has been affected uh, on all of us for more than one year now, and uh, it's not finished. We, we hope that uh, we will return to normal life uh, next September, and, uh, you know, the last uh, um, numbers we had either in Europe or in the States seems pretty good, but uh, we'll see. But how that uh, crisis has affected a company like yours, you know, in terms of uh, organization, in terms of, uh, you know, mind, health or spirit of your employees, in terms of business? Uh, could you um, summarize all this for, for us, for our readers? Yeah, well, first of all, I really hope that everybody is doing well and safe. There's no doubt that the last, I would say, 15 months have been, you know, very disruptive to all of us. I mean, we have lived one of the most difficult situations across the globe, and nobody has been immune about it. So we have certainly been following up, like all of you, the situation with our own employees, with our customers, and our partners. In the case of our industry, on the IT side, certainly technology has become an enabler to kind of help us keep running the business every day. So in our case, since the pandemic started, our customers have been demanding more and more support, and we try to be helping them the last several months on their digital transformation. So that's how we've been living, certainly the last, the last year, the pandemic situation. How do you see uh, the return to a normal life, uh, let's say, next September? Do you think we will go back to where we were before, or do you think we will uh, organize differently? Yeah, I think this, this, this pandemic situation has for sure brought several changes. We all have experienced what remote work means. Many, many companies in the past have not really implemented you know, remote working, as they have done the last months because there was no other option or choice. I think many company CEOs have already established a new setup for you know, the coming years to come, where flexibility is going to be part of it. Uh, I don't think that we're going to see all of us going, you know, like we used to go back to work 18 months ago, um, all companies, every single employee going and doing the things that we used to do in the past. I don't think we're going to remain as we are right now. Our vision is we're going to have more and more flexibility, and therefore we're going to see some roles or jobs going back to work. Others that will have more flexibility work from home. I also think we're going to think twice about traveling, how often we're going to travel, how do we optimize some of those internal meetings, etc. So I think we're going to see adjustments, but um, probably that's why everybody talks about the new normality. Okay. Well, now let, let, let's talk about uh, NetApp's uh, products and, and um, solutions you're offering. Um, of course, our readers know NetApp pretty well, but let, let's uh, summarize what, what you're offering now. Uh, if it's fair to say that uh, NetApp today is organized in three buckets, uh, the one is uh, data storage, uh, you know, NAS and SAN product, uh, then you have the hybrid uh, cloud, and then you have uh, data cloud services. Uh, how is it, first of all, is this a fair description of what you're doing and what the synergy between these uh, three, uh, let's say, uh, activities or business unit? Yeah, great question. And, and certainly the world has been changing. Our customers have been changing. You know, we're living a, a, a complete new world. Digital transformation is at the core of every single company. And that happens as well at NetApp. So if you go say, Cesar, can you please define NetApp? Well, we're cloud-led data-centric software company. And I want to say that again, we're a cloud-led data-centric software company. Basically, the transformation of the company that is happening as we speak is putting our customers at the center of everything that we do. But more important, we're basically empowering our customers to use their data and operate with their data the way they want, regardless if they are developing their applications in a native way in the cloud, if they want to move their applications to the cloud, or if they want to keep some of their applications on-premise. 
most of our customers, as you will know, are living in this hybrid world, and that's where we want to make sure that NetApp is going to help them to empower them with their data, as I just said. So, but do you see a synergy between these three, three uh, activities, or are, are they the same thing on, on different, you know, model? No, 100%. Think about the way you describe NetApp and how we're envisioning not just the future but the present. Most of our customers, they don't want to go and have different type of data. They don't want to go and say, this is the data that I have in the on-premise world, this is the data that I'm having in the hybrid world, you know, NAS, SAN, or say cloud data services. What they really want to make sure is that regardless where the data is, you know, they have access to it and they can perform with the right variability, performance, you know, and trust on their data. And that's what we come in. Basically, we are trying to connect that world. There's customers that have been working with us, you know, in the on-premise environments. There are customers that have started working with us in a pure native cloud world. And our job is to make sure that we work through our data fabric vision, you know, connecting all those dots. So the answer is yes, it's very connected. Okay, so uh, definitely the world is uh, going to the cloud. There is no doubt about that. Um, so it means for you, you are going to sell uh, either to enterprise, which are your customers, but then you are selling also direct directly to the uh, uh, cloud services companies like AWS, uh, Microsoft, uh, Azure. Uh, it, how, could you explain how this is working? And uh, could you tell us a little bit, a little bit of uh, where you are with the uh, Keystone program, you know, the subscription model you are uh, using for a few, time, f a few uh, years now? Yeah, great question. I mean, let me kind of try to position, uh, uh, not just the cloud piece, but uh, a big trend, which Keystone is a great answer for it. More and more, our customers are shifting from CapEx to OpEx. So in other words, how can we move into a, a, as a service, right? And, and this could be software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. But they're really looking say, hey, I would love to have models where I get subscription to use our technology or your technology, the internet app, but I want to make sure that I still be able to do that in my on-premise world. I don't want to lift or shift or run these apps in a public cloud environment. That's where Keystone comes at the core. So basically Keystone is our new offering. Well, last year offering we've been working on where many customers and partners are taking advantage of it, where customers can use our technology and use that as a service because basically they're paying a subscription for it. Um, and that's helping many of the customers to really not go and say, the only option that I have to use this as a service to go through a third party public cloud vendor. Now, going back to your first question on, we are selling to customers, but we are also selling through hyperscalers. This is a great strength because basically what, ha what has happened is that the core of our technology in the on-premise world our customers have been using our technology and they actually trust, you know, um, the performance, reliability and consistency of how they're treating their data through our technology. Do you know that it's a huge component of software which is on tap? We basically brought that technology to the cloud and we can offer that technology in the cloud in different ways and forms. There's customers that are coming and buying that from us and using, you know, either a public cloud or multi-cloud or hyper-cloud, you know, uh, uh, hybrid cloud, sorry, uh, environments. There's customers that are saying, I want to buy this through my hyperscaler. So they go and decide to work with Microsoft or with, 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 with Google Cloud or with Amazon Web Service, and they're using those cloud services, but they want to use our technology. As you will know, um, last month, actually, we were announcing in France specifically, you know, the fact that uh, uh, Azure NetApp Files, which is our technology through Azure, was, you know, going to be hosted in their local data center with Microsoft. And therefore, we're offering the right sovereignty and, and data protection and, and, you know, data residency needed for the, the French market. So all in all, the great strength is our customers have that power of choice and they can go and decide when and how they can run their apps, either in a nine per scaler, in two or three, on-premise or all together. Okay. 
Um, you uh, recently announced that uh, you are going to stop uh, the um, HCI uh, solution, hyperconverged infrastructure solutions, and then you're going to develop and uh, focus on your project uh, Astra. Uh, could you uh, give us some detail about that and uh, why uh, the uh, HCI is not the solution for your customer to move to the cloud anymore? Yeah, we see, you know, certainly when we build our offering and we saw the market moving, you know, there was a clear trend around HCI. The reality in the last couple of years, especially the last 12 months, we've seen a huge trend and change where Kubernetes have become, the, you know, the core of, of their needs. So the word big decision has been to invest on Project Astra, which you know well, you know, is basically helping enabling our customers you know, to bring all their data and use kind of the different containers of Kubernetes. And we're trying to do that with the different hyperscalers, and that's our big value proposition and differentiation. But as well, we're bringing that possibility in the on-prem as well. So we have decided to go and invest ahead of the curve and be first in class, you know, bringing this Kubernetes well in real, you know, through all our customers, through the hyperscalers, and as I said, as well in this hybrid cloud world. So when this, this project Astra will become a solution and, and products uh, available for customers? Well, we don't have already launch it, so we already have customers that are taking advantage of it. And as I said, we believe there's great savings for them and also stronger performance. So we've seen HCI demand going down because people is really needed to go to the next stage. And part of the reason has been your, your point before, which is acceleration of the public cloud adoption. So we have decided to really become a strong enabler to help these customers to move much faster their mission critical and these apps to this public cloud world. So the, this means that the, the world is going to uh, containers and then Kubernetes uh, and the, the virtualization will uh, uh, go down, you know, slowly, will still be there because it's still a big portion of what, what uh, companies are doing. But uh, in, in the few years to come, I mean, um, everything will go to containers. That's, that's your assumption? Well, as you will say, you know, the world is pretty big and I think there's space for everything and everybody. It's like years ago, say, is the world going to the cloud? What that means to the data centers and the on-premise world? And we have seen that the cloud has been growing very fast, but at the same time, data centers have not passed away. We still have them. I'll say the same here. What we're seeing is there's no doubt that containers and Kubernetes are going to be and are becoming more and more part of the core strategy for most of our customers. And, and we're seeing less momentum on the overall ACI piece last virtualization. But doesn't mean that that's going to disappear. What we're seeing is a huge growth opportunity on the real container and our customers were pushing us very hard to help them in that transition. And given our commitment through the, you know, with our data fabric vision, that's what we can with Project Astra to help them there. Okay, uh, you, you just announced a, a new uh, program partnership, um, especially announcing uh, what you call specialization, and it means that, that you, you are asking partners to be, uh, m I mean, proposing specialization and uh, higher competences to their own customer, which are your customers as well. So that's one thing. And then you just finished the uh, sales reorganization of your company. Could you uh, elaborate a little bit about that? Yeah, but all of it is connected. I mean, let's start with from the beginning, which is NetApp has been changing. NetApp has changed, and we're changing. We've been transforming our company. If you wish kind of thinking about NetApp being a single product years ago, storage company, into what we are today, which we are a cloud-led, data-centric software company. And there's a lot behind this cloud-led, data-centric software company. As you go and transform your company into this new reality, you need to transform your go-to-market. And your go-to-market is not just a reorg. It's basically thinking about how I'm gonna make easier for our customers to do business with us. How I'm gonna help my partners to generate more business given all the roadmap and the technology that we've been developing the last years. If you go and see what we have done the last years, you know, we're quite unique on the fact that we have brought our technology as a default part of the hyperscalers offering. I mean, today, those upper stillers, when they're trying to run a biz app or an enterprise app or, you know, a, a, a mission critical application, you know, they're using our technology and offering that, becoming our partners, somehow our resellers, because they're the ones invoicing the customers for that service. 
That's a huge change. What is happening is that our customers are looking to us slightly different than in the past. They're not just saying, hey, I want to buy from NetApp, you know, an asset, you know, and storage, you know, or uh, 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 disks to kind of storage my data. What they're looking at is for more and more solutions. They're saying, hey, I need to run all these apps and I need to run all these base apps, you know, in these different environments. And I want to make sure that my part of that in working with me in the last 30 years, you know, can help me to get this done in a, you know, in a, in, with the performance, the latency, the reliability, and, and the security that I had in the past as I was doing that in my own data center. So what we have done in the organization has been, you know, building new muscles and driving more and more specialization inside the app. So our thousands of SEs, you know, uh, software engineering group that we have supporting our customers and partners, they're starting to become more and more specialists. Specialists around AI, specialists around business apps, and different type of solution areas that we've been creating. As a consequence of that, we go through a reorg, where basically we have tried to map the different solution areas and expertise to support better our customers. And we're bringing more and more digitalization, where customers can interact with us in a faster, cheaper, and easier way. That's a consequence as well to the partner side. Basically, we're bringing our partners into that change, and that means bringing more and more training and readiness to our partners to take advantage of the new NetApp and the technology. And at the same time, we want them to differentiate more and more themselves by getting specialization and having more specializations to our customers so they can be more competitive and support better our customers, our joint customers. Okay, um, I just have uh, two, two more questions for you. The first one is, uh, I don't know if you buy, the, you know, remember the, the famous phrase of uh, Mark Andreessen saying the, uh, the software is eating the world. But uh, definitely uh, you, you have a, a very strong experience in, the, in a famous uh, software company. Um, wh what do you think you are bringing to NetApp? Uh, and do you think in, in terms of that experience in software, and, and do you I think uh, NetApp is a, definitely or will become a software company, which, if I remember, uh, was a, at the very beginning, NetApp was a software company, and, and then you had customers asking for, you know, having appliances, so you, you bought the uh, hardware and, and, and you made these appliances for customers. So do you think that's a return to the origin of uh, NetApp? Yeah, that's a really good question. As I've been saying in the discussion, we're a cloud-led data-centric software company. That means software company. And certainly, as you will say, hey, my background wasn't necessarily a, a hardware you know, background, despite that I did a little bit of hardware in, 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 in my past experience. I think you know, the reason why I came to the company was to really help us on this transformation, you know, to really go through this, you know, not just software, but also cloud-led services company. You know, we have a great asset. The last 30 years, we've been building, you know, great level of trust and a lot of loyalty with many customers. Um, as you will know, many of our customers have been working with us for many years, and they really trust the technology that we have been providing them for one of the most, if not the most important asset that they have, which is their data. Today, if you go and talk to the CEOs of any of the companies, digital transformation and how to monetize and what to do with my data is at the core, is at the top two or three things that are top of mind for them. Well, we are at the heart of that. We are at the heart because we're teaming up, you know, with the hyperscalers, we're teaming up with many of the companies, with the business apps vendors to ensure that those enterprise applications, those business applications, that artificial intelligence, that machine learning services, at the end of the day, all those needs that those customers have can operate and run in a reliable way and an efficient way. And that's what NetApp comes with our technology. So yes, I came here to help the journey that NetApp already started years ago. You know, I'm not gonna say we're gonna go back to our um, beginning because the reality is the world has changed so much that we see an untapped potential for us in the future. And I came here and we're working together with the great assets that NetApp had and some new muscles that we're building to support better our customers and to achieve bigger growth. Okay, L last question. Uh, if, uh, if, if you take a look to uh, the annual report of the last 10 years, uh, you, you can tell uh, that uh, NetApp has been a, a no-growth company. Uh, but 
it well, it has always been uh, pretty well, uh, pretty good, uh, profitable. I mean, that's no doubt about that. Uh, do you think this, all this uh, reorganization internally with your partner, uh, the the revival revival of your portfolio, do you think all this uh, is like a new start for NetApp for new growth uh, in the years to come? Yeah, I think you know not just the reorg. The reorg is a consequence of you know, defining who NetApp is and what is our value proposition for the future. As you well said, we've been playing, you know, we've been in, in the last years, you know, addressing a market that was not necessarily a growth market. And in a way, we're playing, you know, in that storage world. The last years, the company has been changing. The company has been changing and our addressable market is much bigger today than it was in the past. Today, we have a huge opportunity around public cloud. You know, the public cloud, as you know, is growing at a very fast speed. And, uh, and we are at the core of that public cloud with our technology to help, you know, to enable those customers to run their enterprise apps, business apps, you know, and even to do backups in a cheaper way, helping these customers with our technology. So the first piece is we are entering a new addressable market that should be helping us to faster the growth. At the same time, you know, the overall share that we have in the on-premise world, it's a big opportunity for us. You know, as you know, in France, we're the number two player, but still there's a lot of room for us to keep increasing our overall market share. So we believe that the new strategy that we put in place and the changes that we're driving in our go-to market, and at the same time, the changes we're driving in our partner ecosystem are going to help us, us are going to help us to enable a new muscle which is going to faster in our growth for the next years to come. So yes, we're expecting to grow the business and that's our commitment. Okay, well, uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, uh, I think we pretty much cover uh, many different subjects. Uh, and uh, thanks again for spending some time with us. Uh, and uh, I hope we'll uh, see each other sometime uh, in real life, not uh, remotely. Thank you so much for the time, and it was my pleasure to be with all of you. Congratulations for the good job that you did. Thank you. Thank you.